I speak with the tongues of men and angels and I don't have love. I'm just a tinkling cymbal sounding breast. I, I want you to understand that that man was standing there fumbling and, and he was backing up. I, I don't know, he had been hunting that reverse gear for a while. Back down my steps and said, uh, uh, we'll come back. I said, promise? Because <laughs> I ain't through yet. Let me tell you, you need to let the Word of God shape your mind. I, 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 I just, I, my daddy used to talk about when they plow with a mule. And that old plow had a crossbar between the handles to stabilize it. And when you're little and you're holding on to those handles and that thing hits a stump, that old crossbar will come up and hit you right in the chin. I think I just hit a stump. We have allowed our minds to be conditioned by the culture. Are you hearing me? We have allowed our minds to be conditioned by popular theories that are around us. We have allowed our minds to in, intake from our entertainment sources things that are offensive to the Holy Spirit. And our minds have been shaped to the point where we think on carnal terms and we no longer think with spiritual minds because the only thing that you can find that this word says is that spiritual things are spiritually discerned and we cannot discern spiritual things anymore and so we live in the natural we live in the flesh we walk after the flesh we think after the flesh but when our minds have been saturated with the word of almighty God the creative word that spoke this universe into existence it it shapes our thinking. It changes our mind. It changes the way we process information. It changes us inside and we can believe God and we can have faith and we can do whatever God tells us to do because we know He is with us and He's not going to let us down. I don't know where all that was headed but it's out there now. Whatever folks do with it, it's up to them. This nobleman demonstrated full faith after he had been exposed to the words of Jesus. Go on home. Your boy's all right. Let me tell you what happens to faith. When it's faith that's been perfected, it's contagious. That nobleman didn't come to Jesus by himself. He had servants and he had those that worked with him and you know, he, he, he came with an entourage. That was just the way they did things then. And on the way back home, he runs into some more of his servants. Verse 51 said, And he was now going down, his servants met him and told him, saying, Thy son liveth. Without ever having seen the fulfillment of Jesus' words, this man anxiously headed home, to his son, whom he now believed to be healed for some strange reason. <laughs> the only thing that perfected the faith in his life and allowed him to turn around and walk away was the word of Jesus. Go home. It's all right. And, and there, there's, there's one more little interesting thing. I know that on his way home, doubt attacked him I know the enemy attacked his mind and said boy you, you're going back home for the funeral that man didn't know what he was talking about it didn't make any difference to him and I got to tell you your faith is going to be attacked your faith is going to be tried the devil's going to see if he can't destroy your faith you need to ball up your fist spiritually speaking and bust the devil upside the head and tell him you, you don't have any right here you can't talk to me. I'm not listening to you. I'm not listening to the world. I'm listening to God. I'm listening to God's word. And I'm going through to victory. Matters not what anybody says about it. In verse 52, it said, Then inquired he of them the hour when he began to amend. There, there, there's, 
there's a couple of things I want to point out. They said unto him, yesterday at the seventh hour, the fever left him. Now, this man is not an ignorant man. He's well educated. He's a man of means. And he begins to put things together in his mind. And notice the wording here. When did he begin to amend? Well, this man's experience, when people, when people recovered, it was a process of recovery. And he's literally asking, when did he begin to get better? They gave him a different answer. They said he didn't begin to get better. The fever did not slowly dissipate. They said the fever left him at about the seventh hour. He didn't just break his fever and then start. He got healed at that seventh hour. And the man knew, the man knew that it was the hour that Jesus had spoken to him. Somebody said, what happened? Well, they got home. I can just imagine the boys playing in the yard. He's running around chasing the puppy or something. I don't know. He's having a good time. He's enjoying himself. He's not sick. He doesn't act like he's been sick. And the people at the house knew that it was unusual when they saw him suddenly healed, that that was an unusual thing to happen. The man and his servants that are with him arrive home, and they begin to tell the story. We went to see this man called Jesus, and about the seventh hour yesterday, he said, go home, your son lives. And they said, that's the same time he got well. He didn't begin to get well. He got well. And this perfected faith is contagious. The Bible said the father knew that it was the same hour in which Jesus had said to him, Thy son liveth, and himself believed, and his whole house. Now I know sometimes we run it in the ground a little bit. We talk about healing and miracles and we just talk about that kind of stuff all the time. And somebody said, don't y'all have anything else to talk about? Listen to me. When the Spirit of the Lord is working and when the Word of God has been preached and taught over and over again, it is expected that miracles will take place. It is expected that God will manifest himself through his people. It is not an unusual thing for God to manifest himself, heal cancer, heal diseases that the doctors say are incurable. Not unusual for God to work in an unusual fashion. And the faith is contagious. I, I want to just close with a little story here tonight. The musicians can come if you will, and the singers. I grew up in a church, and I can't tell you how many preachers and missionaries that that church produced. In the age group just ahead of me, and in my age group, there are literally dozens of preachers and missionaries and Christian workers. But the reason I think that that happened is because it was a church that believed in miracles. They had seen miracles. They had experienced miracles. And they believed God even when doctors said it's impossible. There was a lady in that church whose son, grandson, many of her family, been in the ministry for many years. 
One of her sons was Sunday school superintendent. One of her sons now is a retired minister who lives, uh, he was actually a member of my church for a while and he led to singing. And he told me this story. He said, my mother had cancer. The cancer was in her lower abdomen. What he described to me that the cancer had done to her body is something that I cannot describe to you. And it was before the days of hospice care. They sent her home to die. But here's what that lady said. If I can just get to the house of God. And one Sunday morning, this woman in a dying condition, no way in this world that she could live, was rolled down to the front of that church on an ambulance cot. And the people in that church who had experienced God over and over again, who were familiar, who walked with God, gathered around her, laid hands upon her, and God instantly healed her, and she lived for many years after that. Let me just tell you, when we build the Word of God into the framework of our mind, when we fill our hearts and minds with what God said, now there are a lot of good preachers out there, a lot of good preachers preaching the truth. And I like to hear the great preachers preach. But what I really need to hear is what did God say about it? What's God's word on it? What's God got to say about it? And I can go beyond and get in touch with the source. I believe that this church is a place where God can pull hearts and minds together and so saturate hearts and minds with the Word of God that there is an established faith. The Word gets out. If you want to get help, go to where people know God. And let them pray for you. I believe that's what God wants to do. Perfecting imperfect faith. I just got to tell you, I've been in situations at times where I'd go get prayed for, go get prayed for, go get prayed for. There comes a time when you have to draw a line in the sand. And I had to draw it. Getting weaker, weaker by the day. Hardly able to go for diagnosis from the doctor. You're going into a wheelchair. Friends prayed, family prayed. I just kept getting weaker. But I made up my mind. I'm going to preach until Jesus comes or until I die. And I ain't going in no wheelchair. Now that's good South Georgia language. And I preach to you tonight because I drew a line in the sand and said, devil, this is as far as you go. <laughs> I got to tell you, folks, sometimes you got to fight for that line. But you just stand firm with the word of God. You'll be all right. Take what faith you have. Act on that faith. And keep acting on that faith until God perfects that faith by giving you a miracle. Stand with me, if you will. I don't know what this has meant to you. But I hope you got a grip on it. I hope you got an anchor now. And I know your pastor preaches the word. I know that. But it's time for that word to break out. And for us to see God at his most glorious 
in this world. Amen. How many of you in this congregation tonight could say, Brother Tim, I need a miracle. Would you just slip up your hand and just signify that I, I need a miracle. I've been prayed for before. I'm still going to pray, but I need a miracle. I want you to hear the word of the Lord. Hear the Spirit of God speak in your heart tonight. I've got this. It may be bigger than you. It may be bigger than the doctor. It may be bigger than the lawyer. It may be bigger than the government. It may be bigger than anything that you can think of. But it's not bigger than me. And I want you to get a grip on your faith. And I want you to believe God for yourself. And then believe Him for somebody else that God is going to work in their lives tonight. I believe He will. I believe He will. Heavenly Father, add your blessing to the preaching of your word. May faith arise in the hearts of people. May it come alive. Lord, may miracles take place. And may all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise be given unto you in the glorious name of Jesus. Let's all come to the altar. We'll dismiss at the front. Let's all come to the front. Jesus. You are the Lord that he left me. You are the Lord, my healer. Take the step of faith and come. Come to the altar. And he, you are the Lord. Precious Lord, you are, you are the Lord that he let me, you are the Lord, my healer, you sent your word, just like Jesus did. Thy way, go thy way, thy servant. He sent his word. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. In his presence tonight, you know, you believe his presence is here. This is the place where miracles happen. This is the moment. It's all about what's going on in your mind right now. You can initiate your healing right now. Your act of desperation. Act of desperation. Transforming that imperfection into perfection. Bringing that faith to perfection. It can happen right now. When you walk off this building, you know you have a word from God. I always say, when you go to church, never leave. Never leave without a word. Never leave. Never read your Bible without take, receiving a word. That is the word. That's the rhema. Something God will say to you. That's the rhema. That's where the miracle is initiated. And right now, every one of us, in some way, some form, or some fashion, maybe somebody's watching tonight, you need divine intervention because of human limitations. You and I, we have limitations. But with God, there is no limit. Take the limit off of God. 
is the life of faithfulness, wholly trusting in Him. You may not feel it, you may not see it, you just have to know it. Just know it. The Bible says when two, two people agree on the same thing, all that means that you need to find somebody who will agree with you for your miracle. Can you do that right now? We are many here. Find somebody and say, sister, brother, will you, will you agree with me? And this is what I want to pray for. Will you agree with me? And if we pray together in agreement, the Bible said, God give us a word. He said, he said, nothing will be impossible. If we agree, it will come to pass. Find a partner right now. Let's put in your practice our faith according to the word of God. If he said it, he will do it. If he spoke it, he'll bring it to pass. Right now on the platform, musician, everybody, find somebody to agree with you. One on one. One on one, no side by side holding hands. Hold both hands of that person and be in agreement right now. Start praying. Maybe you're watching right now where you are in your home, husband, wife, son, daughter, children. Join hands together and believe in agreement for that miracle right now. Believe for your miracle. You see, you have to have the faith. You have to have the faith. Whatever faith you have, God can use it. Whatever measure of faith you have, God wants you to use it. And He will increase it. He will increase it. When He begins to work in your life, when you see God start working, that faith you're exercising now will start increasing, ever increasing. And the more God works in your life, the more that faith will increase ever increasing faith. Thank you, Lord. As we come into agreement tonight, Lord, many, many people, Lord, need healing, need deliverance, need a breakthrough, need financial breakthrough. Most importantly, right now, God, we need healing in our bodies. Lord, touch your people. Touch your people. We need healthy bodies, healthy mind removed mental pressure, the depression, the stress the barriers, the hindrances, oh God the mind blogging demons in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus oh God we have your word tonight we take your word tonight glory to God
will not disappoint you. He will not disappoint you. He will not disappoint you. Oh God, I thank you, Lord. Your people are in need. We all are in need, oh God. And you are the only, only one we can turn to tonight. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Father, I declare your blessings upon this congregation. I declare your anointing and your healing power. Lord, as something begin right now, Lord, to happen in our lives. In this simple service tonight, oh God, we just want your name to be glorified. And whatever we do, Lord, is for your honor, for your glory. We can do nothing if we are lacking health. I pray for healthy bodies, healthy minds. Our pur the, the purpose for which you have called us will be fulfilled, O oh God. Father, prepare us, Lord, and use us mightily this week yes, to touch other lives, to touch many lives. Let our lives be a model, an example, O oh Lord, to others. Let the love of Christ be seen in us. The sweet fellowship and the communion of the Holy Spirit, Lord, remain and abide with us. O oh Lord, bless your people and keep them. Cause your face to shine upon them and be gracious to them, Lord. Lift up your countenance upon them, Lord, and give them your peace, Lord. We ask it, Father, in Jesus' name. And everyone who said, Amen and Amen. Give your brother and sister a good hug tonight. I said, God is going to do a work in you. Everything's going to be all right. Everything is going to be all right. Yes, everything is going to be all right. God is good. Amen. God is good. God is good. Praise the Lord. Uh, hallelujah. Glory be to Jesus. Ushers, would you please uh, get ready to receive an offering tonight? Praise the Lord. Before you go, let me just remind you. Ushers, go ahead. Pick up your offering tonight. Wednesday night, and I think Tuesday is a holiday, am I correct? Yes. Tuesday is a holiday, so Wednesday night we'll be here. Pastor Tim will be speaking again on Wednesday night. And I know God's going to bless you with His Word. Amen? And Thursday night we'll be preaching in, in Penal Rock Road. On Friday night we'll be preaching in Shaguanas. Sunday we'll be preaching again in the South. So I know God's going to use him. I want to keep him in prayer. God will use him. I'm trying to spread him around. All right? Amen? You are blessed with his ministry, and other people need to be blessed with his ministry. Glory to so look at Father, see you here on Wednesday night. All right? The Lord, the Lord tarry. If not, and the Jesus should come, we have to worry about anything. Amen. I said we have to worry about anything. It's glory, hallelujah, forever. Glory to God. You have a great week. And stay in the love of Jesus. Keep everything in prayer. How many received that word tonight? Very powerful word. Perfecting. Perfecting in perfect faith. That's, that's powerful. It's a tremendous example. And it's very deep. I mean, you just touched on the surface. But it's very deep. You study it and major upon it. Every one of you have a word tonight. This was given to you. And God will perform that. It shall not return unto him void. Amen. Glory to God. Give the Lord a good clap offering tonight. <laughs> Praise the name. Thank you for watching us tonight. Join us again on Wednesday night at 7 o'clock for another time in God's presence. Until then, have a good night. God bless you. Keep looking up. Your redemption draws nigh. God bless you. Have your official Christmas.